Good morning all. Today we are going to begin with the second module of power generation transmission and protection. In today's session I am going to give you an introduction about various transmission line parameters followed by resistance parameter in detail then skin effect and finally the inductance on a current carrying conductor. All of you are quite familiar with overhead transmission lines. You can see it everywhere on the road sides. They are actually group of conductors running parallel to each other carried on supports. As you know supports are actually the poles and post which you are seeing frequently. Basically this overhead transmission line consists of four parameters that is resistance, inductance, capacitance and shunt conductance. Since this shunt conductance is caused due to the leakage current, its magnitude is so small so that it can be neglected. So you are left with only three parameters that is resistance, inductance and capacitance which you have to study in detail. All these parameters are actually uniformly distributed over the whole length of the conductor. They are not concentrated or lumped at discrete points on the transmission line. Let's see resistance of transmission line parameter in detail. As you know the basic definition of resistance is actually the opposition which is uh, provided to the flow of current. Here you will learn about both AC resistance and DC resistance. Whenever a DC current is flowing through a conductor, the current, the DC current gets uniformly distributed throughout the whole cross sectional area of the conductor and that DC resistance value can be calculated by using the standard relation. If you are considering a single phase two-way system, the total resistance is actually double the resistance of each line and it is also said to be loop resistance. Whereas in the case of a three phase system, the resistance per phase is considered as the resistance of a single conductor. So by using this relation, we will be able to calculate the DC resistance value. This is not the same as that of the AC resistance value. It's due to the phenomena known as skin effect. Let's see what skin effect actually is. Whenever AC current flows through a conductor, the AC current tends to concentrate around the outer surface of the conductor rather than at the center. So definitely current density at the center gets reduced and this particular phenomena is known as skin effect. From the standard relation of resistance that is R is equal to rho L by A, you know it very well that resistance is inversely proportional to cross sectional area. But when AC current is flowing through the conductor, the effective cross sectional area of the conductor has been reduced due to this particular phenomena of skin effect. As the effective cross sectional area of the conductor has been reduced, there occurs an increase in the effective resistance value when AC current is flowing through the conductor comparing with that of DC. So for the same conductor, the value of AC resistance is definitely not equal to the value of DC resistance. And it's also clear that the value of AC resistance will be always greater than that of the DC resistance. Now let's see why such a phenomena is occurring when AC current is flowing through the conductor. For that we are going to assume that each conductor is made up of numerous strands and each strand will be carrying a very small portion of the current. Whenever current is flowing through the conductor, definitely magnetic lines of force or magnetic flux are occurring around the conductor. Those strands which are nearer to the center portion are crowded by numerous magnetic flux lines. And hence the magnetic flux linkage at the center portion of the conductor is maximum. Due to this, the center portion has larger inductance value comparing with that on the surface. This is from the standard relation of inductance that is L is equal to psi by I where psi is actually the flux linkage. Hence the flux linkage at the center is maximum then definitely the inductance value also will be maximum at the center of the conductor. Consequently, the reactance value at the center will be also maximum. That can be realized from the standard relation of reactance that is inductive reactance is given by the standard relation XL is equal to omega L instead of omega you can also substitute 2 pi F. So in that particular relation when the inductance value is very large then definitely the magnitude of XL that is inductive reactance also will be very large. 
Due to this very large value of inductive reactance at the middle portion of the conductor, it will not permit the AC current to flow easily through the middle portion of the conductor. Consequently, the current will flow mainly through the portion which are nearer to the surface of the conductor. And this particular phenomena of crowding of the current near the surface of the conductor is known as skin effect. Hopefully the concept of skin effect is very clear for you. Now you all might have a doubt then why such a phenomena is not occurring in the case of a DC. In the case of DC the inductive reactance value will be zero because the inductive reactance relation is given by XL is equal to 2 pi F into L. In the case of a DC current the value of frequency is actually zero. Hence the inductive reactance value also will be zero. So such, a, so such a phenomena will not occur in DC current. Now let's move to the next topic that is line inductance. Whenever AC current is flowing through the conductor, the flux set up by the conductor will be also AC in nature, that is alternating in nature, which will link with the conductor. As the flux is alternating in nature, it is time varying on. Therefore, according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, Whenever there is occurring a change in flux and EMF gets induced, that is given the relation here. So lambda is represented here as the flux linkage, you are dividing and multiplying it with the term di. Then this term will be actually flux linkage divided by current, that is actually the inductance value. So you can substitute it by the value or by the term inductance, which is also indicated by this relation that is L is equal to psi by i. In order to derive the relation for inductance of a single current carrying conductor, we are going to assume the conductor as a cylindrical one with radius r as shown in this figure, carrying current of magnitude i. Definitely the current which is flowing through this conductor will set up the magnetic lines of force around them. As you can see in this figure, it's very clear that this magnetic lines of force are not only occurring outside the conductor, they are also occurring at the inside portion of the conductor. Both this internal flux and the external flux will together contribute to the inductance value of the conductor. So while calculating the inductance of this single current carrying conductor, you have to take into consideration both the internal flux linkage as well as the external flux linkage. First we are going to see the flux linkages due to internal flux. For that we are considering a point at a distance x meters from the center. The magnetic field intensity at any point x meters from the center is represented by hx as shown here. All of you are quite familiar with ampere circuital law. You have already studied them in your school classes. According to ampere circuital law, the line integral of magnetic field intensity around any closed path is equal to the net current enclosed and the corresponding relation is represented here the line integral of magnetic field intensity around a closed path which are x meters from the center is equal to the current enclosed in this portion that is ix as i have said before the total current which will be flowing through this conductor is i so by solving this we will be getting the relation 2 pi x hx is equal to ix where 2 pi x is actually the perimeter of this strip which is shown here at a distance x meters from the center. So from this we will be able to write the relation of magnetic flux density that is hx is equal to ix by 2 pi x. That is the magnetic field intensity at a point x meters from the center of the conductor. Assuming that current I is uniformly distributed throughout this conductor, then the current which will be flowing through this cross-sectional area pi r square will be I. From there you will be able to find the value of current Ix which will be flowing through the portion pi x square that is the area of this particular region which I am showing by the cursor. So the current which will be flowing through this complete cross-sectional area pi r square is I. From there I can say the current which is flowing through unit cross-sectional area is I by pi r square. So you can find the magnitude of Ix by simply multiplying it with this particular portion's cross-sectional area that is pi x square which is shown here. You can get the value of Ix 
by using the relation pi x square by pi r square into i. As I told, the current which will be flowing through the complete cross-sectional area is i and the current which will be flowing through the unit cross-sectional area is pi r, i by pi r square and the current which will be flowing through this particular region is indicated as i x which can be calculated by multiplying the current flowing through unit area with pi x square. Now you have to substitute this value in this standard relation. Substituting and solving it, you will be getting the relation of hx like this. This is the relation of magnetic field intensity at a point x meters from the center in terms of current i. Now we can calculate the value of flux density at the considered point x by using the relation b is equal to nu into h. Since the considered point is x, we will be writing it as bx is equal to nu into hx. Instead of nu, we can make the substitution nu0 into nu r. But we all very well know that the magnitude of nu r in the case of non-magnetic material is 1. So you can make the substitution of nu r as 1 and the substitution for hx from the previous slide you will be getting the relation as nu0 xi by 2 pi r square. This is the relation for magnetic flux density at the considered point x. That is the magnetic flux density at any points over here. Now we will consider a cylindrical shell of thickness dx here. That is at x meters from the center. And let's assume this conductor is of length 1 meter and the flux which is flowing through this cylindrical shell that is shown here is represented by d phi. Now we know the relation for flux density at this particular point from which we can calculate the value of flux d phi which is flowing through this cylindrical shell. As the flux d phi is flowing like this the cross-sectional area can be considered as a rectangle and that rectangle its length will be 1 meter and its breadth will be the thickness dx. Therefore the flux d phi can be written as bx into 1 into dx. As you all very know, sorry as you all very well know that flux density is defined as the flux per unit area. So that is bx is equal to or b is equal to phi by a. So from the standard relation I can very clearly write here d phi is equal to bx into a and the cross sectional area is actually the area of the rectangle and its length is 1 meter and its breadth is dx. After making the substitution of bx from here you will be able to get the value of d phi as nu0 xi by 2 pi r square dx. As this flux d phi is flowing through this cylindrical shell this particular flux will link only with that particular portion of current which are at the inside portion of the shell. That is, this flux d phi will link only with the current ix. Hence, in order to find the flux linkage, you have to multiply the magnetic flux per unit area with pi x square. Thereafter, making the substitution for d phi, you will be able to get the value of d psi as nu0 ix cube divided by 2 pi r raised to 4 dx. This is the relation for flux linkage at a point x meters from the center of the conductor. So far we have derived the value of flux linkage at a point x meters from the center. In order to obtain the total flux linkage from center to the surface of the conductor that is over the complete radial length we have to integrate the value of flux linkage d psi obtained from the previous slide at a point x meters from the center over the whole radial distance that is 0 to r. By integrating it you will be getting the value of total flux linkage as nu 0 i by 8 pi. From there you can easily find the value of inductance that is the inductance value due to internal flux alone. You can calculate it by dividing this flux linkage with the current value. So by dividing this particular term with the current, the, both the current terms gets cancelled and you will be getting the value of internal inductance as nu0 by 8 pi. 
with that we are completing today's session all of you must write down the relations and understand it thoroughly then only you will be able to follow the remaining video sessions okay thank you